Hello, everybody, and welcome to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show on iHeartRadio. Just ahead, Car Talk. Mike Mars reviews our new vehicle of the week, the 2022 Ford Mach-E. Plus, we'll have the upcoming events calendar. And later, Mr. EV, Buzz Smith, joins us. Right. Plus, we'll have this week's auto news headlines all just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We need more Jeff Zeke, and I'm do. Don Armstrong. Uh, out today is King Conrad DeLong. He will be back next week, we hope. He's still partying in Austin. Something about a warrant and... Um, I, I, I don't quite I understand don't all of that, but at any rate, uh, it's good for you to be with us this morning. Thank you for allowing us into whatever device that you're allowing us into. We have a lot of them. We, we have we a do. lot of devices. We do. Nor is that vices. I Those, think that's, that's what it is. Both. Uh-huh. Both. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Mr. Mars, how are things over in Nederville? Pretty good. Well, Sun's shining, the wind's blowing. And no uh, no uh, chemical plant has blown up down the street from you? Not the last 24 hours. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Nice. Jeffrey, how, you, how, how have you been, Wonderful. Sir? Just wonderful, wonderful. Good. And Jeff's going to have a little tire segment later on in the, today's three-hour mm-hmm. program. We invite you to stay tuned for that. It's always interesting and fun. We're taking them off the Corvette. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> not after that kind of money that I uh, spent on those tires. There you go. Anyway, um, so today we have joining us um, a great guy from Consumer Reports. His name is Mike Quincy. Mike, good morning to you, and thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you. Um, so uh, Mike is uh, going to talk to us today about how to make your car last 200,000 miles and more. And Mike, I, I focus in on this because obviously with almost all of America buying used cars these days, there are some that have, you know, 35, 55, uh, 75,000 miles on it. But then there are those that don't that are over the top on what we would used to consider uh, max mileage. Oh, you've got to have the engine rebuilt, the car scrapped, all that. Not so much anymore, is it, Mike? So the sweet spot is 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 more miles then. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Are you waiting for me to jump in here? <laughs> yes, yes. Please go ahead. Um, you, you know, I was I I I remember when there was a time when a car got to be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand miles, and that was it. I mean, the death knell of a car was when it got close to a hundred thousand miles. Now, my you know, my parents are like, oh my gosh, the car's going to fall apart anytime soon. But these days, cars are made so well that it, it is not unusual or impossible to get 200,000 miles out of a car. And you mentioned the, the car market right now. The new car market is insane with, with crazy prices. And that has trickled down to the used car market as well. It's not easy to find a used car because everything is more expensive. So some of the advice that we have here at Consumer Reports is to take keep your old car running as long as you can. And, you know, really, if if you follow the directions that nobody ever reads, it comes in the glove box <laughs> of a thing called an owner's manual, it pretty much steps you through all of the things that you need to do when it comes to maintenance on the vehicle. And for that, if you follow those rules and regulations, barring any unforeseen accidents and things like that, you should be able to make that car last 100, 200, 300,000 miles. I remember a story not that long ago. A fellow that owns a Volvo, and he's owned it since it was brand new, and it's got like 2 million miles on it. Well, he didn't get to 2 million miles by not doing anything but, you know, changing tires or something. I mean, he invested money into it. And, you know, we talk about investments. You you spend, let's just say that you bought a new car today. Average price of them now, $40,000, mm-hmm. okay? and so. You, you could you could skate for a while by doing things like changing the oil, the tires, the wipers, the regular stuff that you need to do with a car. But if you really want to stretch its legs and run it out there to 100, 200, 300,000 miles, it's very important that you do keep up with those, uh, those items that they mention in the owner's manual. Well, right. And, and I think a lot of people get tripped up because if they, they go back to their, their dealer, say, you buy a new car and you, they say, you know, we'll give you 20 free oil changes, but that gets you back in the dealer. And usually when you drop your car, car off, there, there's the, the, the whole maintenance department. And they have all these suggested uh, uh, maintenance items that you should look into. And that's where it gets a little tricky because, the, as you said, 
the owner's manual is really the Bible for, for keeping track of your car. And it doesn't necessarily sync in with, with what the dealer is telling you. So, uh, you know, our advice is generally, uh, you could probably uh, ignore what the dealer suggests you should do and just stick with your owner's manual. Well, I have to tell you, I have a 21-year-old Corvette. Uh, it currently has 25,000 miles on it. So mileage certainly isn't the issue with the car. The timing out of, of, of certain things that you needed to do to the car. For instance, I had a, a major uh, service this past January of all of the fluids. cost me $1,000. And I'm talking about, you know, not only the oil change, but uh, the coolant change, the transmission oil change, the uh, power steering, the brake flush, all of those things. But that hasn't been done since it was new. So all of that stuff needed to be done. I spent the money, and hopefully that car won't need it for another 20 years. Well, right. I mean, but, but, but if, you, if you amortize that $1,000 bill over that 20-year period, uh, year in and year out annually, that's really that, not that much money. But, but you make a really good point. I mean, cars are, are, are in better shape when they're driven. And when they're not driven, that's actually when you can get some maintenance problems because hoses get dry and crinkled. Your tires can get dry rot. Uh, all that, all that stuff. So, so the best thing you do is, is drive your car and, and kind of pay attention to what's going on. Cause even a new car can have some weird squeak or rattle or something is not quite right. And the general advice here is even a small problem can become a big problem and a more expensive problem. If you don't lick it in the uh, nick, nip it in the bud immediately. Well, one of the things that you guys bring up in this, uh, in this article about how to make your car last more than 200,000 miles uh, are some of the cars Basically, it's a brand reliability score that you guys have come up. Let's go over. Let's let's go over that if we can. Well, sure. I mean, it, 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 we Consumer Reports puts out a number of surveys every year, and the autos surveys are focusing on on uh, owner satisfaction, reliability, things like that. That that really makes up the gist of our overall ratings. But we take the data because I work with very smart statisticians, and they're able to. Uh, crunch the numbers and come up with a with a with kind of a, a, a brand loyalty or a brand report card, which shows that a number of manufacturers, mostly Japanese manufacturers, are are building cars that a lot of owners like especially well. And and the and the funny thing is, a, a lot of those brand report cards that those companies that score highly are also among the most reliable models. So as we're talking about, you know, making your car last a long time, uh, diving into the used car market. You have models like the Lexus CT200, the Toyota Prius C, the Acura TSX, the Honda Civic, the Nissan Altima as among the more reliable used cars. And, and so it's, it's interesting to see that, that sometimes those sync up the models and the manufacturers. Well, and you know, to finish that list, uh, one of the things that I thought was amazing is the Mazda MX-5 Miata, the little sports car. Who would have thunk? Of course, the Volvo, that doesn't surprise me. Subaru Legacy, that doesn't surprise me. But the GMC Canyon made it to the list. Wow. That surprised me. Yeah, I, me too. I got to admit, I had to, I, had to, I had to do kind of a double check on that one. Well, uh, I will say that uh, the, the list also that you came up with, uh, you know, as far as things that you need to do to the car. First 36,000 miles, not a big deal. Uh, oil change, tire rotation, wiper blades. Okay, we got that. Uh, $180 and you got that in the bucket. But, you know, once you start getting to the 60,000 mile range, you're talking about most definitely tires. That should have mm -hmm. probably happened somewhere between 36 and, right. and 60,000 mm -hmm. miles. Um, let's talk about front struts. Nobody even knows. Well, no, nobody. We do. Uh, most people don't really know what front struts do. Kind of like shock absorbers. Uh, mm -hmm. with a spring, $979 just for the front. And those are real wearable items, but it takes a while to get there. But, you know, I guess the bottom line is one of the things that I've always said to folks is, look, you know, you're going to have to pay one way or the other. You're going to have to pay the bank or the loan company that you got your car from. But generally speaking, if you maintain the car and you amateurize it over a year's period of time, that payment that you come up with, whether it be two thousand dollars or so uh, for maintenance on big, big items like the front right. struts, rear struts, control right. arms, that sort of thing, it's a whole lot cheaper than buying a new car. 
Absolutely. And, and, and as you, you, you amp up the miles and we'll probably get to that, you know, there's this little thing called a timing belt that a lot of cars have. Yes. And, and, and this really goes out to kind of the, the, the younger buyers that just, you know, they're so excited to have their first car and they don't realize what, what comes into play. And, and if they, they, you know, someone says, have you done the timing belt yet? And they say, Oh, you know, that's fine. I don't have to worry about that. So yeah, a timing belt is, is, can be a pricey uh, repair, but it's a lot less money than getting your engine rebuilt. Now, you know, you talked about penciling out the, the dollars, Don. How does or will something like an extended warranty come into play for the 100,000 mile? And there's there's vehicles out there that are, do have bumper to bumper in some respects of 100,000 miles. Hyundai comes to mind. So is an extended warranty conducive for this to make it last past that? Uh, your opinion. Uh, generally speaking, and Consumer Reports did a, did a, a survey uh, uh, about this a, a number of years ago, I, I believe the number is like 60 to 70 percent of, of ex- people that bought the extended warranty never saw a dime. So, so they, they didn't actually uh, you know, reap any of the benefits that they paid for. Uh, the, the better advice instead of the extended warranty is, is use the data that, that in Consumer Reports reliability information to buy a more reliable car to begin with. And listen, the, the, no one knows more about their cars than the auto companies. So, so you know, extended warranty is all about data and statistics. That the car companies generally know what components may or may not break, may or may not last a long time. And you have to read the fine print in any of these extended warranties to see exactly what is and isn't covered. I mean, if if you buy a, you know a car that's kind of on the fringe of uh, in terms of reliability. And, and something breaks after the regular warranty is over and you bought the extended warranty, you know, good for you. Statistically speaking, uh, we're not seeing that that happens very often. So uh, my advice would be instead of, you know, buy an extended warranty, buy a more reliable car. Hmm. That, that, that's great advice. And I, I would uh, agree with that. I mean, you know, spend a few extra dollars instead of buying the extended warranty. You know, there's so many warranty companies now uh, that are uh, advertising all over the place, spending millions of dollars in advertising about uh, uh, buying their uh, warranty program. It's a product. And, and it, well, and it, but but that, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point because th- there are kind of these mom and pop shops or these, you know, fly by night organizations. An extended warranty usually isn't worth a grain of salt unless it's backed by the factory. In other words, if, if, if Toyota or, or Jaguar or, or, or Audi is going, you're going to buy an extended warranty from them, that's one thing. Then you have recourse. But, but a third market uh, uh, warranty program, I would be very wary of that. Yeah, and there, there's the, those are the ones that are spending all the big bucks right now. And they are very well aware of the fact that the used car market is on fire, although we are seeing some data right now that says that it may have reached its peak. But a lot of people are buying used cars. Here in Texas, we have a thing called paper plates. And, you know, if you buy a used car, chances are pretty good that you're going to get a a paper plate on the back of it. And uh, you see them all over the place here. And you're going, you actually bought that car? Oh, (laughs) yeah. You spent money on that pile? Okay, fine. Good luck to you. Let me know in a year how that worked yeah. out. I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch for you on the side of the road. 30 so I can give days. You a ride. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, but, I will say that I did buy an extended warranty one time, and, and we were living in San Antonio, and we were coming back and forth to Beaumont at least twice a month. And so I bought a, a Honda Accord because I knew that we were going to put close to 20,000 miles a year on it, and I bought the extended warranty because I didn't want to have any trouble because it was mainly my wife driving and back and forth. And, and – uh, like you said, though, I never used it. Yeah. <laughs> I put 200,000 miles on that car and never used the extended well, warranty. I, I, I well, I will say this, that, that there is some sort of peace of mind, if you want to call it that. I was getting to that, yeah. To, to buying a, something like that, you know, it's like buying life insurance, kind of, in the back of your mind. But I think that's one of those things that you really need to be cautious about how much money you spend on an extended warranty. And, uh, you know, do you really need that much? Well, right. Uh, and, and, and to your point, what if you put that money that you, you're going to put into an extended warranty into future repairs? Exactly. So if you're spending $200 a month on a warranty, all right, take that money a year's period of time. I think we can do the math. 
Well, there you go. There is a major fluid change right. for your car right. that it may need <laughs> when the, the the day that you buy it. Well, it's not on wearable parts, and, and to Don's point, yes, it is peace of mind because the Cadillacs that I purchased, I've always purchased an extended warranty on it, and not necessarily have used them uh, aggressively or to their full, but it's it's in your back pocket, and that's what I like. Don't don't you that, don't you agree, Mike? That there's some value in that. Um, it, it depends. It depends on your car. Now, now you, you mentioned Cadillacs. Um, the, 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 one of the saddest stories that, that I can think of recently is that Cadillac builds a couple of really nice sedans, the CT4 and the CT5. I love driving them. Hardly anyone buys them, which is really depressing because they're really good because everyone wants an SUV. But if I were in a market to buy a CT5, a uh, Cadillac might be one of the manufacturers that I would consider getting an extended warranty. Let's mm-hmm. say you grew up and your whole life, you always wanted a Jaguar. You always wanted an Alfa Romeo. And listen, I'm a car guy. Car love is completely irrational. <laughs> I get it. I totally, <laughs> totally, totally car get love. it. I like that. <laughs> so if, if, I, if I'm finally going to get that Alfa Romeo Julia that sings to my heartstrings, yes. I would buy the extended warranty. However, knowing what I know, the place where I work, I probably wouldn't buy one. So there you go. <laughs> well, I mean, there's something to be said for that because uh, let's face it, uh, many, many, many of the things that uh, Im- Im- impel you to go and buy a car, you go, mm, I really like the way it looks. I like the motor. I, li- I like everything about it. But... I'm a Chevy guy, so I'm going to go and buy the Chevy instead, which might not really be the way to go, you know? He's throwing his hands up. <laughs> no, no, that's a great story because my, my neighbor right down there, I mean, I'm, I'm in my house right now uh, broadcasting from my dining room. My neighbor down the road was there. They were a GM family, and this was many years ago when, uh, uh, when Chevrolet had those, uh, the, those SUVs with the inline six-cylinder engine, the name of the SUV is escaping my, it's not the trailblazer. trailblazer. That's it. Okay. Uh, she said, well, I got to get a new car. What do you think of the trailblazer? And I gave her my advice. I said, listen, it didn't do well in consumer reports test. It has a terrible record for reliability and it failed a government crash test. I mean, you have to work hard to screw up a government crash. Test. Everything has a, has a five-star rating from NHTSA. Now, you know, the, the insurance Institute is a different, is a different deal. But, but, but GM couldn't even get that crash test right. So I said, I don't think the Trailblazer is a good idea. And she looked at me and said, well, what do you think of the Trailblazer? And, and, <laughs> and, she, and she went out and she bought, bought it. it. Yep. And in six months, she said, oh, my God, that was the worst decision I ever made. I was like, you know, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him think. Yeah, that, uh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so where can we find more information about this, uh, this report that you guys have come up with? Uh, check out consumerreports.org, uh, how to get your car to 200,000 miles. Uh, my compatriot, Benjamin uh, Preston, wrote this great story. He's on vacation right now, which is why you got to see this beautiful face instead of Ben. Uh, but he's super <laughs> smart, and he's you know working with, with me and uh, my, my brilliant colleagues at Consumer Reports. There's lots of great information, especially for used cars at consumerreports.org. Uh, also, check out our tire information. That's like the most... Uh, underutilized uh, aspect of our testing. Nobody tests tires like we do. Absolutely. Well, uh, I will tell you, it, it is great to talk to you, Mike Quincy. We we love Consumer Reports and love talking to you guys, and you do great work up there. Keep up the good work. And, hey, next time that you've got something on your plate, you be sure and call us and let us get you on the air. We love it. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Love that stuff. I know. It's always good to talk about stuff. And, like and everyone that. from that organization is spot on with their information. They they just well, drill it into your head because they got a bunch of geek nerds like my oldest daughter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, is is that all she does is numbers. Yeah. And they, they there's a method behind their madness, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it it actually works. Plus, it didn't yeah yeah I recall he thought how many miles from the test track is he? What do you say? Not very far. I don't know, 15, 15 minutes, 15 minutes uh, away on, from the we're, test we're track. 10 yeah, minutes yeah. from highway, whatever. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com.
Mm-hmm. It's time now for the events calendar. Who would happen to have I that? I happen to have that. I have I to ask the dais. Here I know because the dais. with yeah. Conrad not well, here. Well, I got today. a last nightus. Yeah, <laughs> the day I okay, the dais. Okay. No, it's uh, I've got events calendar in and HRA and all that good stuff. So the events calendar today's Saturday, Nifty Fifties, Grogan's Mill, the Woodlands, and we all know who that is. That'll be tonight. Yes, and that, now that's a, a car show that. Uh, you, your car has to be, I don't know, 30 years old or something. To there are requirements, in. yeah. yeah. There's, there's but, specifications. Uh, but for those of you that, that really want to go see a really classic car cruise in, this would be the one to do it. Yep. And then the uh, uh, Kima Car Meet, 6 to 9, that is today. Uh, Friday through Sunday, April 22nd uh, at 4 p.m. at April 24th at noon. The tw- uh, 20- is it the 22nd or the 24th or what is it? 22nd and the 24th <laughs> is going to be the 2022 Mustang Anniversary Weekend by well, HSO. that would be the 22nd through the 24th. Right. 22nd through the 24th, which is in a couple weeks. What do you say? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Didn't I say that, Mike? <laughs> no. Right, I thought you okay. said <laughs> You said the 22nd and the 24th. And then there's a 23 in there somewhere. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's in Houston, Texas. You just got to translate it. <laughs> See, Conrad does this. I love you, Conrad. Uh, the event is hosted by the Houston Shelby owners of Houston. So that's good. Uh, Saturday, April 23rd uh, of this year at 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. I say this year because he wrote it down. Uh, the Bill Iris Benefit Car Show. That's at 9055 Airport Road in Conroe. So in other words, it's going to compete against the NHRA. Uh, yes. Well, just that one day. And this from 11 to 5. And then Sunday the 24th, this is competing against the, the finals. Uh, at 8 a.m., uh, the 28th annual car show registration is open now. Uh, Tomball High School. So if you've been to Tomball High School and you maybe have to put a book report in. I barely you graduated do... from high school. I don't know. Well, it's there, and it's uh, in Tomball. Maybe I should go inside and maybe try to learn some more. You could just get kicked out again. Yeah, again. <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, time now for this see hour's you coming. Car... Time now for this hour's car review. Mr. Mars uh, had a chance to drive the Ford Mach E. That's the all electric SUV. Yes. What do you think? I was um, really looking forward to it because I hadn't driven one. You know, we saw the picture. We see them at the Houston Auto Show and stuff. I was really looking forward to driving this. And I, it's the 2021. And so, you know, when you start a car review like that, you were really looking forward to it. But apparently, it wasn't all that at the end. Well, we have to wait till the end to see. Okay. <laughs> All right. I read the book. Yeah, he read the book, but I'm going to watch the movie. So it's the 2021 GT all-wheel drive version. So there's actually oh. five trim levels available in this thing, um, starting with the Select Premium. Uh, and they got some cool names here. There's the California Route 1, and then there's the first edition, and then there's the GT. And again, like I said, we had the GT all-wheel drive. And, and this is kind of, the EPA has got it classed as a small station wagon when they go to figure the mileage. But to me, it's kind of like got a hatchback. I don't know exactly where a you would put it. station wagon. Well, that's in the category for the EPA for the mileage categories where oh, they got it. They need to go back. And yeah, I think it's more of a hatchback. But anyway, it, uh, it is, this is the first year of it. So uh, it's pretty unique in a lot of things it's got because it's a lot of the styling tips that it's got off of it really are from the Mustang. When the first time we saw it, we went, oh, it doesn't even look like a Mustang. But now, having to have it a week and looking at it and looking at some pictures and different things, the tail lights, some of the sidelines, and the hood, the way the hood comes down in the front, I didn't realize it until I was looking at some pictures that I'd taken from a long distance away. But the new Mustang GTs, not the Mach-E's, they've got a real sloping hood that I don't particularly care for because it brings the grill opening down real small. Well, this one, if you back off from it and look at it, it's got those same kind of lines. So there really is a lot of Mustang You have to be looking to for that. I, I agree. Because it doesn't again, look anything like a Mustang. But there are uh, – <laughs> some of the styling tips are there. I'm just telling you. So you're going to find this vehicle up front. You're going to find LED headlights. You're going to find wiper-activated LED headlights. So if the wipers come on, the headlights come on, and the rain-sensing wipers. So if it rains – it kicks off the windshield wipers, which kicks off the LED headlights, oh, which dear, I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, it's got the active shutters up front where the grill used to be, and it actually has a trunk up front, a frunk. And you open it up, and there's this just open space in there, and it's got a emergency passenger escape hatch. So I guess you put bodies in there. But the good thing is it's got a drain plug on it, so if you leave the body in there, 
too long, and you, just, you, you can wash it out. That's so. Uh, on the back of it, it's got a rear spoiler, sequential LED headlights off the Mustang. Very good. The uh, We had the optional, at this level, the panoramic fixed glass roof. Mm. Kind of like a panoramic That's great summer. in Houston, Texas, Except, with 100-degree temperatures. Well, that's morning. what I was thinking. It was okay while I had it, but what's it going to be like in August? Because there's no cover. There's nothing to cover it up. It's, it's What it is is what it is. And we were rolling on the 20-inch optional wheels. You get into the inside of it, we had some ambient interior lighting, which uh, includes the illuminated entryways. We had the performance Ford performance seats. They were heated in the front, and I uh, had the split folding rear seat to kind of give you a little more cargo room. It's got a really nice 10.2-inch digital driver screen where you're going to see all the gauges and everything works. Um, and there's a big, can't miss it, 15.5-inch center screen. And it'll split up into multiple screens so it can do multiple functions, or you can have it in this one big uh, big window if you want. And it's got a rotary shift on it, like some of the other vehicles have gone. And I thought that was pretty cool because uh, it doesn't take up much room and uh, just sits kind of down there, and that was cool. Now, we had, because we had the GT, we had the optional extended range battery. Now, this is 88 kilowatts. And we had the optional motor on it because the GT, the performance, 480 horsepower equivalent, 634 pound-feet of torque. Now, this has got a single-speed transmission. It's what, how Ford lists the transmission on it. The EPA, again, has it in the small wagon category. The city should be about 90. Highway 77 combined should be 84. Now, that works out to 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour in this vehicle. I couldn't figure out how to convert what I got into... Uh, miles per gallon, but over 324.1, I got 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So I'm uh, guessing that over the combined, it was better than 84. And uh, I will have to tell you this, it's got some very smooth power bands from start to finish, from the time you roll off the line till you decide to stop, but it will put you back in the seats. I mean, it, it'll, it, it's got some juice to it. Torque. It's very performance oriented. It's got a tuned suspension for it. And so when you're out on the road, you know you're driving in something that's kind of oriented towards a little more performance. Hmm. And when you step off on the accelerator, it is there. So we're looking at the base trim price on a GT all-wheel drive is $59,900. Now, the price as tested is $64,200. But you can get a base model of one of these in the $46,000 range. If you can find one. If you can find one. And if you're looking for something to compare it to, a Tesla Model Y starts at 39000 But to get to the performance model that kind of equates is $63,990. Volvo XC40 Recharge is up around $53,990. And a lot of them, like the Audi e-tron and some of the uh, Porsche models, they're up in the 100. Wow. Way on up there. So I liked this vehicle. I, driving it, I really liked it. Now, I had some issues charging. And that's one of the things we're going to talk with Buzz in the next segment. Well, but I was as far ask as you, the 64, does that include the home charger or? Uh, not from Ford. Okay. Okay. The Inwheel Time Car Show is now part of the iHeart family and available 24 7 at iHeart.com and through the iHeart app. Just look for the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show. We stream also on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InwheelTime.com. Heck, we're everywhere. Inwheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. Father's Day weekend, Saturday, June 18th, 2022. It's the next Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in, and you're invited. Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day edition will be at the same Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. on Saturday, June 18th. It's the only place cruisers compete for trophies and other prizes. Enter your vehicle for best hot rod, best classic, and best modern classic. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest cruise in and is your opportunity to see the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods, and get Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos and adult beverages. There's no entry fee, and cars will automatically compete for custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It all happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10. Kick off summer with Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day Edition, Saturday, June 18th. The In Real Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Celebrate Father's Day, the start of summer, and the return of Tailpipes and Tacos. Saturday morning, June 18th, 8 to 11. We'll see you then, weather permitting. 
Tony Stewart Racing joins the NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series and his drivers, Leah Pruitt and Matt Hagen, will face off against NHRA stars including the legendary John Force Racing Team. Don't miss this battle of horsepower and performance. It's the final NHRA Spring Nationals event at Houston Raceway Park. Don't miss it. April 22nd through 24th. This is your last chance for Nitro action in Baytown. Tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best car talk show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Real Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite car talk team. In Real Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Real Time Car Talk. 